Good morning, everyone, or good afternoon, or wherever in the world you are. Good day. Uh, my name is Nick Davey. I'm a product manager with the Cloud Ready Data Center Business Unit at Juniper, and I work on the Contrail project, um, which I'm excited to talk to you a little bit about today. Uh, we have uh, a fantastic agenda lined up for you all. Uh, we're going to do a brief overview of Contrail networking, talk a little bit about what it is and what it does. Then uh, Prasad and Michael Henkel will take you through the architecture of Contrail and uh, some of the changes we've been working on over the past year or so. Uh, we'll have a section about observability and analytics because um, once you get everything connected and secured in the cloud, um, we're of course going to need to figure out where traffic's going and, and how it's flowing. Uh, and so my colleagues, Prasad and Sean, will be covering that. And then finally, we'll talk to you about our Contrail Pipelines uh, product offering and, and what we've been building around uh, the themes of GitOps and automation. Uh, and Roche will be presenting that. Uh, and then finally, um, after the Contrail section is wrapped up, we'll be talking to our colleagues about our uh, client to cloud SD-WAN experience. Um, and um, that's that's how we'll cap off today's session. Uh, of course, if you do have any questions, please jump in. We're all excitedly anticipating uh, your questions, so please don't hesitate. All right, uh, with the agenda aside, um, I want to talk to you a little bit about what uh, what's motivating um, all of these uh, advancements and all of the, the work that we've been doing at Juniper. Uh, experience has been our, our main focus at Juniper for a number of years, and that's operator experience, that's administrator experience, and that's ultimately customer and client experience. Uh, whether it's just the operator enhancements that we originally built into the Junos operating system, making it easier to avoid errors and um, uh, less less risky to introduce changes to a network, uh, to the automation uh, offered by Abstra or the cloud connectivity offered by Contrail. Um, experience is really what's driving all of the work that we do. Uh, we understand that networks and clouds today are made out of many complex uh, projects, products, protocols. Um, there's all kinds of variables that we have to manage. So uh, what Juniper has been focused on is simplifying and improving that experience and making all of this uh, mess a little bit more manageable. And cloud really uh, is the thread that runs through everything that we do at Juniper, whether it's building the infrastructure for clouds in the underlay or building the software that connects together all of our applications in the overlay. Um, all of that work contributes to improving the overall experience of managing complex applications. And Contrail is central to our cloud networking strategy. Uh, Contrail is how we deliver a, a simplified user experience to complex cloud applications. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about Contrail and what we've been up to. Uh, over the past couple of years, we've noticed the trend of operators, both in the enterprise and in service providers, uh, starting to explore new orchestrator technologies. Uh, Kubernetes burst onto the scene in the enterprise application hosting space and offered uh, a new and dynamic model for workload orchestration. Uh, really, Kubernetes crystallized a lot of the concepts we've been working on as an industry around cloud native, um, improving application delivery, improving the reliability of the applications that we deploy, and overall uh, just uh, working to build a, a, a human consumable interface to all of these resources that we have to manage. In uh, classic deployments, Kubernetes sat at the top of the stack managing the applications themselves, and there was a whole bunch of infrastructure that powered the, the Kubernetes um, uh, infrastructure. OpenStack and other orchestrators were responsible for managing the bare metal and the underlying pool of resources, and Kubernetes ran on top of that just like any other application. Um, but where Kubernetes used to run on the bare metal before, uh, today Kubernetes is running the bare metal. Uh, as an orchestrator, Kubernetes has expanded its purview to offer support for virtual machines, for um, arbitrary network connections, um, for bare metal management. In, in essence, Kubernetes has really eaten the whole cloud stack and is becoming the orchestrator that powers all of our infrastructure. And so Contrail, uh, coming from its stronghold of OpenStack SDN, um, we need to, to um, adopt these trends as well. 
when we built Contrail, we originally built them or built the, the product out of the best of breed cloud technology available at the time. But as cloud technology evolves, so too must our architecture. So today we're going to be talking to you about how we have woven Kubernetes into the fabric of Contrail, how we've integrated our API into the Kubernetes API and what the benefits are of doing that. Uh, of course, the immediate benefit is we can provide networking to Kubernetes pods and VMs that are being orchestrated by Kubernetes, uh, but there's just so much more that we bring to the user experience of managing complex cloud applications. Uh, the goal of Contrail is to, first of all, implement uh, Kubernetes networking in a non-threatening way. Um, Kubernetes is a workload orchestrator, so as our uh, application owners and as cluster operators add apps to the orchestrator, um, there's an expectation that they can consume resources like uh, load balancers and apply firewall policies, um, basically consume all of the networking primitives built inside of Kubernetes. So Contrail's first goal is to not scare any developer or application owner. Uh, when Contrail is installed in a Kubernetes cluster, we provide networking um, like any other uh, container network interface. Uh, and we do so in a way that streamlines things like bare metal deployments. We basically build in all of the various services and infrastructure that you need to run your apps on top of Kubernetes. Now, once you move beyond the kind of basic set of, of network connectivity offered inside of Kubernetes, uh, if, for example, you've got a, a more complex use case where you're running a container network function like a firewall or an, an inspection engine inside of Kubernetes, you need the ability to create um, complex or arbitrary networks. Um, if that container network function is offering subscriber services or um, you know, hosting an application through a virtual IP, you may even need to introduce a routing protocol into your Kubernetes cluster. Yes, <laughs> what's old is new again. Um, so in order to uh, accomplish that, Contrail brings with that sort of base set of Kubernetes networking uh, a robust set of advanced networking tools. Uh, the ability to create arbitrary L2 and L3 segments inside Kubernetes, the ability to extend routing protocols, to inspect and mirror traffic, all of the set of tools that you would expect out of a production network infrastructure are made available to you now in a Kubernetes cluster. And this doesn't just apply to Kubernetes clusters. I mean, yeah, um, we'll talk a little bit about this later, but uh, it's possible to run VMs inside of Kubernetes using kubevert. Uh, and the experience is just absolutely phenomenal. Uh, Kubernetes is an incredibly fast API. So orchestrating VMs in Kubernetes is an, a really snappy experience. Um, but we also bridge or offer connectivity back to OpenStack deployments as well. So that same Contrail SDN that powers OpenStack can connect to your Kubernetes cluster and offer a seamless networking experience. In general, in Cloud 1.0, uh, there was a trend um, to geographically distribute infrastructure or to, to you know, break, uh, break up the blast radius. And so um, multi-cluster connectivity was always um, a, a solution that we offered. Um, but multi-cluster with Kubernetes has taken on a new meaning. Uh, Kubernetes clusters tend to be uh, much smaller than OpenStack clusters. They tend to be uh, either application or department specific, at least right now. And so there's a, a big challenge that, uh, that that deployment pattern presents. We need to tie together all of those clusters to give them consistent connectivity, security, and visibility. Uh, and so in order to accomplish that, we've built multi-cluster into Contrail, uh, and which allows us to not only run uh, the, the networking out of multiple or for multiple Kubernetes clusters, um, but also to connect together uh, remote Kubernetes clusters and provide seamless overlay forwarding between them. Uh, you've heard me talk a little bit about um, kubevert, and um, we'll talk a little bit about uh, federation later when we talk about multi-cluster. Um, for everything that we're doing, we're building on top of the great work that the Kubernetes community has started. Um, we're extending these projects. Uh, we're integrating uh, a, a robust set of networking tools into them. Um, so the, the goal here is to work alongside the community and offer a, a better experience for networking. Um, Juniper's not reinventing the wheel with anything that we're doing here. 
Um, and finally, uh, with all of these uh, projects integrated and extended, uh, we have a, a great set of uh, capabilities that we can present that allow for easy automation through things like text-based configuration of your entire infrastructure, uh, and then validation that we can wrap around that using uh, pipelines and other, um, other automation techniques. You'll hear all about these concepts and details from my colleagues in uh, some coming sections. I wanted to just talk about the challenge that multi-cluster presents before I hand over the microphone, because uh, I mean, in classic clouds, this was a challenge in next generation container powered clouds. This is uh, a massive challenge. Um, infrastructure and uh, just networking and security are, are organizational concepts. We have connectivity profiles that we need to create. Uh, we have security profiles that we need to apply. Uh, and so the challenge has always been in multi-cluster setups, um, once you establish connectivity, how do you have that or establish that, ex um, that experience of having your policies and your, um, your connectivity everywhere that you go? Um, in classic Contrail, we did this through BGP peering and some clever exchange of routes that allowed for overlay tunnels to be established between clusters. But with Kubernetes, we don't have to make BGP our DMARC point. Uh, instead, we can plug the SDN directly into multiple clusters so that logically the clusters are separated. I mean, it's a dedicated Kubernetes control plane for the application, but uh, the networking is shared between all of those clusters, allowing you to control connectivity between them and all of the applications residing in the clusters through a common interface. Now, I did mention blast radius, and that's still a concern. So when you do need to segment up your network, either for uh, resiliency or for latency or for any other reason, uh, you still have the ability to federate the uh, multi-cluster deployments. So you can really pick the best multi-cluster uh, architecture for, you, uh, for your solution. You can have these kind of um, clusters of clusters in a region that give you segmentation and security, and then tie all of those clusters together using kubefed and configuration federation and uh, leverage Contrail to establish seamless connectivity between all of them. Uh, we'll talk about this in detail. I know this is a bit of a, a, a complex uh, concept to cover in a, a brief introduction. Uh, so my colleagues are going to walk us through it all. Um, what we're really building towards, though, is the ability to put the right workload in the right location uh, and deliver, again, that uh, incredible experience to our customers and our, our users. Uh, it's the ability to stretch our network wherever it need be, to apply our policies uh, everywhere pervasively throughout our network, uh, and to have visibility into everything that's going on in the cluster. Uh, 